Welcome to our interview series at the Nutanix Cloud Together Summit. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and we're here today with Chip George, Vice President for Public Sector at Nutanix. Uh, Chip, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Good to be here, Wyatt. So let's kind of level set for our audience. Where is the federal government in its journey to the cloud in general from your perspective? Yeah, the journey is the right word, first off, Wyatt. It's certainly an evolution in progress uh, towards uh, what people are aiming to get out of cloud. And I'll come back to that, but the investment, the use of cloud is certainly a journey. The uh, At first, a lot of federal agencies uh, looked at cloud and said, you know, they had these cloud first policies. And I think that was smart at the time. What they've done is as they've evolved, they've learned from that because cloud first to a lot of agencies, just like it sounds, meant they should consider cloud first, right? They should look at cloud and, and learn from it. I think at that point, they knew that they didn't know everything. Cloud was very new. If you go back a number of years when, when those cloud first policies started, that policy now that the common term you hear, not everywhere, but a lot of places is cloud smart. And I think it, the interpretation I've seen from, from talking to CIOs and, and directors of architecture and directors of cloud at these various agencies, if they've learned from being, you know, the cloud first, where they were reviewing everything and deciding if it was in the cloud or not, to cloud smart, now they know a lot from having looked at that. And they said, these types of applications are right for the cloud. And they've just as big a discovery is that these types are not. So cloud's not for everybody. It's been an evolution to that cloud smart uh, uh, you know, approach. And what that has mean, as I said in the beginning, is that what people have landed on is that they want, they still want the same things that drove them to even have a cloud first policy. And that's that they want a cloud-like experience as they manage all of this various types of data that any federal agency has. But the point is whether it's on-prem are in a cloud or in a different cloud than they first considered in sort of these groups that have been colos and become clouds. Not all the clouds are the same, but the point is they want the same experience in terms of how to manage that data. They want ease of use of managing the data, fast times to spinning up and rolling out new applications, maybe burst capabilities to extend the amount of data you need at different times of the year. So they want a cloud-like experience and they're approaching that in a smarter way but with different agencies and, and different groups and different security standards, they're all in a different place on that journey. Well, and I think you would agree that as we move from cloud first to cloud smart, we're now increasingly seeing agencies move to a hybrid and multi-cloud model. How, how are you seeing agencies uh, making that journey there? Yeah, that is definitely when you talk about cloud smart, the realization that not all data is going to the cloud hybrid becomes the term, as, as you're saying, uh, Wyatt. And the way that most agencies have approached that now is just by breaking down the, the fact that not all data is appropriate for the cloud. So where does that fall? Some data is not appropriate for the cloud for different reasons, like the performance just isn't there. They're at these far flung locations where they don't yet have plans to have quite the network bandwidth that would allow those, those applications to run the way they need to run or on the end user device that they need to run on, right? So there's different applications that just aren't gonna go to the cloud for those types of reasons. There are scalability reasons uh, of the cloud that make the cost different, right? The, the, if you run a certain application in the cloud and it, the, the way it's scaling includes more data, but a lot of egress of that data, the charges are surprising. So performance, cost, and then of course, the overriding thing with security uh, and figuring out if they can enforce and have the right security in the cloud are all things that have made this multi-hybrid cloud environment hard to manage. So if you're going to take advantage of different clouds, having data on-prem, using different clouds that are good for these performant applications, it, using different clouds for 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 uh, data that where you're going to have a ton of data, but it's not that performant, but there's a ton of data, right? And you're not going to egress the data very often. What has typically happened is that means you're, multi, you're managing multiple clouds. And the, the thing that we, the way we've seen people want to handle that is to have the same experience as they're doing that. 
if they pick this cloud for the right reason or this cloud for the right reason, or if they've kept this data on prem for very good reasons, it would be the dream would be to have the same experience in terms of the management and operations at each one of those locations. Absolutely. Well, picking up on your point about security, uh, you know, given the major cyber uh, incidents over the past year, how should agencies look to secure their cloud environments? Well, some of the security uh, responses to that, uh, because it's certainly, as I mentioned, one of the overriding reasons that people look or don't look at certain clouds, uh, some of them are built in. I mean, they ha we have to in this environment that we all live in together, right? We have to follow these FedRAMP standards for pure public cloud offerings. But again, there are some of those cloud offerings that aren't FedRAMP standards because they really started as colos, but it's not on your prem. There's other offerings that you've decided that data should be on prem. You have different security standards in all those places. So what we've said to people is don't just pay attention to the FedRAMP standards. You have to do that. You should, right? You work with the vendors. That list is starting to expand. FedRAMP could operate a little faster from all of us in industry's opinion. But uh, it, pay attention to those standards and use those. But when you're on-prem, let's use the, the same levels of standards there. There are standards that are available to everyone to check, like the DOD runs a approved product list. This is approved for security standards. They, they call it the DOD Information Network Approved Products List, the Doden APL. So we're pointing people towards that to say, if you're going to run something on-prem on in a private cloud experience, why don't you pick something on the Doden APL or, or follow the security uh, technical implementation guides, the STIG, to say, hey, when you that doesn't have to do with an individual product. That is all the things around installing and operating a, a product. So follow the Doden APL, follow those STIGs on-prem, tie those to FedRAMP standards in a cloud, run those in a multi and hybrid cloud environment. And then for both those, add a different layer of security uh, to protect your data, segment your data in a way that would, uh, would make anyone accessing your data, uh, an attacker, make it harder for them to traverse from one bit of data to another. That's segmentation, they call it, or the, the common term for our products is micro segmentation, right? And so we've worked with a lot of, uh, of agencies to install micro segmentation. It's really one of the hottest things we're doing in the security area. And the last thing is, if none of that works, and you've been hacked, you need to have a very good backup plan. And that applies for data in the cloud, data in any sort of cloud on-prem, you have to have a disaster recovery or continuity of operations, a DR2 plan of some sort. That makes a lot of sense. And then lastly, um, given your kind of perspective on the market as a whole, what are the biggest trends that agencies should anticipate coming soon to the cloud? Yeah. the prevalence of cloud isn't going away, right? I think people have gotten cloud smart, realizing some data isn't appropriate for the cloud yet, but the choices of cloud are just skyrocketing. All the contracts, all the FedRAMP offerings, as slow as they can be, they are expanding. The vehicles, the contract vehicles to get to the cloud are expanding. GSA has choices coming out. DOD seems to be figuring their, their way out of one contract into another. So with all that, the trend is that you're going to have, as an agency, multiple clouds to choose from. You're going to have multiple ways to get an on-prem experience that is cloud-like. Uh, in other words, the, the major trend is that you're going to have multiple clouds to manage, right? So you have to, to look to try to give your information technology people, and ultimately the people you're serving, the people in your agency, the citizens, the soldiers, whoever, the same types of experiences. They, they interact with the applications that they care about most from your agency. To have that unified experience, whether you're in one or many clouds, you're on-prem for some data, that's the trend that you have to understand. Take advantage of those vehicles. They're going to get better pricing out there for cloud services, but make sure you have a way to do that easily. And you don't just end up in cloud sprawl with a completely hard to manage different experience in each one. Great points. Well, Chip George, thank you so much for um, uh, joining us today, sharing some of your insights. And we thank our audience as well for tuning in today. You're welcome. Why? Great to be here.